Yo, what's good, YouTube? Zamcro here, aka Scoot, back with the CPC Season 7, and we've got our Week 5 match here today, and we're taking on Rise Pool. So, uh, I don't think. Oh, yeah, yeah, we played last season, but outside of that, we only. This, this is like the second time we've played. We actually teamed up together with Sticks of the Token Minorities and played a tournament together, all three of us playing on the same team, and that was pretty fun. So, I've got a general idea of how smart that guy is and how good he is, and I know he's good. And he's got a pretty solid team as well. As you can see on screen, he's got the Mew, the Tyranitar, Mega Metacham, Superior, Toxifex, followed by Cabalion, Keldeo, Talonflame, Scavalier, and Stunfisk, where his Z-Move users are the Cabalion and the Talonflame. So Talonflame's a huge threat with Z-Moves. I think Mega Metacham, Tyranitar, and Mew are huge threats. Serp can be. And then the rest of his mons are pretty much just annoying, like Toxifex, Scavalier, and Stunfisk. But uh, nonetheless, pretty scary. I felt like uh, like things like Choice Banded Tyranitar could be a good breaker versus my squad. Um, he could have, oh, I know he runs a lot of Mew uh, with like Taunt and Roost. I know that's two moves that's almost guaranteed to be on his Mew. And especially in this matchup because he can taunt things like Clefable and Azu, um, Oricorio, Bronzong, Snorlax. There's all kinds of things he can uh excuse me, taunt in this matchup. I don't exactly know what his last move would be. I know he's going to be running like uh, some kind of psychic coverage just so that he can just hit my team with a uh, psychic stab. I don't have any resist outside of Bronzong and Greninja. So, yeah, he can definitely spam psychic type moves. Mm, Mega Metagem is a huge threat. Clefable is not necessarily the best response to that since you know Zen Headbutt into Poison Jab is a guaranteed knockout and Zen Headbutt into Zen Headbutt is potentially a roll. Um, then there's things like the Talonflame which could be an offensive, a huge offensive threat. Mega Metacham, Cabalion, and Keldeo. As you can see on screen I'm bringing Ori Corio for the second week in a row. Um, it's, it's the Pau version so it's a psychic flying type version and this thing is going to be really nice to have against this squad despite him having Mew and Tyranitar uh, this thing's really good against Mega Metacham, Toxapex, Cabalion and the Keldeo so I definitely had to bring it in this matchup so if we take a look at the uh, at this squad in depth I have Clefable, Greninja, Azu, Tornadus Ori Corio and Mega Sceptile. I felt like I feel like I'm definitely going to be potentially playing him again in the playoffs. I, I think he's guaranteed to make playoffs. He's that good of a player. Um, so I don't like there. There was other ways I could have approached the match, but I felt like this was a good way to kind of at the same time scout him as well as you know prepare myself for our future match if we if we were to meet in playoffs again and i'm sitting at four and zero right now so i have a little room for error um there's teams out there with two losses already so having zero losses puts me in a position to where i can afford to lose um at least two games uh so i don't have that much pressure like he has more pressure on him to win this game than i do and that allows me to scout out better for playoffs and stuff like that so I, I initially thought like maybe a four attacks Mega Sceptile would be nice, Leaf Storm, Earthquake, Hidden Power Fire, and like Dragon Pulse or something for the Talon Flame. But ultimately decided that I was going to change it to a Sword Stance variant, which was pretty cool. And then we've got uh, Tornado Therian. I uh, opted to bring Prankster Defog because I don't want Toxic Spikes to be an issue for my entire squad. But luckily my win condition is going to be the Ori Corio, and it it's actually a flying type, so Toxic Spikes don't really matter that much towards my win condition, but I don't want Azu and Greninja, Clefable, and Mega Sceptile getting poisoned either, so if I can avoid that, I will, and my, my Azu is kind of weird, I got a Sap Super Azu with three attacks and Encore, and I'm like Spadef, so I can take on Keldeo, and my play rough should always break its sub. Um, even without the huge power ability, and this thing can potentially 1v1 a superior, which is pretty cool. I could Encore it into Sub or Encore it into Leech Seed and switch out into my 
uh, Mega Septile, which would be awesome. So all kinds of cool things I can do there. But uh, I guess we can dive like into the individual sets now. I've talked about the matchup just a, a little, probably a little bit more than I should have. So let's go ahead and, and hop into the individual team. All right, and with our first mon, like I mentioned, Clefable here. This is not necessarily the order that I built the squad, but uh, this is the order that I drafted the squad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're in the order that I drafted them. And that's, that's the way I always bring my teams. Not necessarily the way I built it, though. So, let's talk about Clefable here. Initially, I had Thunderbolt on here to catch the Toxapex. But I felt like Wish Protect was a little bit better than Soft Boil and Thunderbolt. Uh, because not only can things like Azu, Oricorio, and the Tornadus appreciate catching wishes, I don't think Greninja and Mega Sceptile's ballsy enough to switch in and try to catch a wish, but the rest of my Pokemon really appreciate wishes, and I don't necessarily need this thing to have coverage for Toxapex. I do plan on using Toxapex as setup fodder for my Oricorio if he brings it. Um, other things that I can use or things like Keldeo and uh, the Keldeo, maybe the Cabalion, like, the, oh, okay, they have to they have to not have Taunt as well, and then Mega Metachamp, so there's a few things that I can set up on with Ori Corio, so I felt like, uh, and, and the main one being Toxapex, so I felt like I didn't really need Thunderbolt on Clefable, I didn't need extra coverage for uh, Toxapex, so I, I bypassed that, and this is my designated Tough Rocker as well. So that's nice. And with the spread, I'm able to be able to take on like a Choice Band or a Dragonance Tyranitar pretty well. And I'm not too threatened by things like Setup Mew or Setup Serp or Toxapex or, or Cabalion or Keldeo, Talonflame or anything like that because of my unaware ability and just being so defensive in this matchup. So it's really nice. Being able to spam Moonblast is really nice too. Outside of Toxapex, he doesn't. Oh, I guess Talonflame, but he doesn't really have uh, solid switch ins outside of Toxapex, Talonflame, and a Scavalier, which you know I could have coverage for him. So he he has to be a little bit he has to scout my sets before he can just you know throw in a move. Like if he if he threw in like a weakened Scavalier or a weakened Toxapex or Talonflame. And he wasn't going for like a recover or spamming his regen on Toxapex, then he would have to scout for Thunderbolt and potentially, you know, switch out into Stunfisk or something like Mew to see what kind of coverage I might have on there. So yeah, this thing's really nice. He can also take high jump kicks pretty well from Mega Metachim if he decides to go that route. And if I get decent rolls or he's uh, not like adamant Mega Metachim, then I could potentially avoid a two hit KO from Zen Headbutt as well, especially with uh, Wish Protect and Leftovers. So. That's the idea behind Clef, and I guess we can, I guess, just move on to Greninja now. Alright, so, Greninja is, this thing has, like, a pretty decent matchup versus the squad, if you take a look. Like, Mew doesn't appreciate Dark Pulse, Tyranitar doesn't appreciate Hydro Pump, um, Mega Metacham doesn't appreciate Hydro Pump, Serp doesn't like Dark, I mean, I guess it can take a Dark Pulse, but... Like, if it's weakened, I could pick it off with Dark Pulse. Uh, I got the extra sensory there for the Toxapex. It does a little bit more than Dark Pulse and uh, hits Keldeo as hard as I can, too. Um, Hydro Pump hits Cabalion, Talonflame, Escavalier, and Stunfisk. So, Hydro Pump is pretty spammable in this matchup. And if he's weakened enough, then, like, Water Shirt can could come in and just clean up the whole game as well, which could be phenomenal. Um, Expert Belt gives me a little bit more damage output and could potentially bluff. A scarf. Uh, he won't see like a life orb or anything like that, but it could bl bluff a scarf, or if I get like good damage rolls, it could bluff specs as well, which could make my opponent, you know, really, really hesitant to try to switch into Mega or excuse me, Greninja. Um, it's a potential lead depending on what he brings in the matchup, and I, I debated Scarf, I mean, excuse me, I debated a Focus Sash variant, I debated a Taunt variant, and a Spikes variant, but ultimately, uh, ultimately decided on these four attacks, so that I could just, you know, spam attacks, get a bunch of damage. Basically, Greninja, Tornadus, and Mega Sceptile are there to open up holes for Oricorio, offensively, 
and then to let you know Clefable, Azu, and Oricorio be the defensive staples, so that my other three offensive mons can open up a hole for Oricorio once his team's beat down enough. Um, I get, there's really not much else to say about this set. I'm, I'm just speed creeping. I think Serp, and then maybe just a little bit of a little bit more speed investment to creep a Talonflame, creep in a Greninja that was creeping a Serp, maybe, um, depending on his investment. But yeah, that's just about it for Greninja, and we can move on now to the Azumarill. And with this, or with this bring, I should say, we've got a, like I mentioned earlier, a Sap Super variant with leftovers, mostly Spadef with a little bit of defense investment It's not too important. It basically saves me from being like bopped by Tyranitar or uh, Talonflame or Mega Medicham, something that doesn't necessarily threaten me by their typings, but they have like, you know, hard hitting stab, like Tyranitar has a Stone Edge and Mega Medicham has like Zen Headbutt and uh, a Jump Kick with huge power and then Talonflame has the Brave Bird. So they can hit pretty hard, but I have enough investment in defense to avoid being just one-shotted straight up by those. And then I can basically his switch into this is going to be something like Toxapex initially, and then he might go into something like Mew or Keldeo, depending on what you know he thinks my set is. If I'm if I click Waterfall and he thinks I'm locked into Waterfall, he could go into Keldeo and try to set up on me or something like that. But uh, I do have Waterfall play off, or excuse me, play rough and knock off <laughs> play off like knock rough or rough knock or something <laughs> and then we've got the encore there encore allows me to encore things i don't think i could encore mew because he'll taunt me uh potentially has taunt on cabalion keldeo or talonflame as well i don't think serp gets it but yeah i can encore a lot of his mons into uh moves like leaf storm or leech seed that i could be immune to scald or something from keldeo that i resist or a secret sword or something or say mew comes in and it's not a taunt variant and it's like calm mind two attacks and roost or something like that i could encore it into calm mind and then go out into my septile and set up a sword stance and then click leaf blade um so that's pretty nice i can also encore things like Toxic Packs into Recover or Toxic Spikes or Haze or something. Same thing for a Scavalier and Stunfisk. If Stunfisk tries to get rocks up versus my uh, Azu, I can Encore it into that. Obviously, it does for your Waterfall banded sets, offensive sets and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, th I thought this was a, a decent brain. Like, it doesn't have any real merit outside of specifically ke checking Keldeo. And the reason being this is why I put so much focus on Keldeo is I don't want obviously Clefable is not going to enjoy a Hydro Pump from Specs variant but my Ori Corio it's it's got a lot of pressure on it in this matchup because of Mega Meta Jam, Cabalion, Keldeo and Toxapex so I felt like having something just for Keldeo and my Azu would be a nice spring in this matchup to take the take the load off Ori Corio and open it up to where it's got a little bit more breathing room but uh, yeah, that's basically it, the idea for Azu, and uh, we can move on. So Tornadus Therian has become one of my favorite Pokemon. Uh, I've used it in, I don't know if I've actually brought it in all four games, but I've been prepping with it, uh, I've had it in my matchup. I've, I've maybe used it before in the past, but I'm, you know, using it a little bit more sophisticatedly now, and I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's such a good mod. And Prankster with things like Taunt and, and Defog and Tailwind and things like that. It's been so fun. So, so fun. And it, it's a pretty good Z-Move user. So, this week we've brought another Supersonic Sky Strike variant. And basically, I can spam Hurricane versus his squad. His only switch in. And, and, and mind you, his, uh, his offensive threats are Fighting Types and a Grass Type. So, Tornadus, Therians, Hurricanes. I mean, excuse me, Tornadus Incarnate. Hurricanes are smacking. I've got knockoff there from you to get rid of its item if it's like a I don't know a cold berry variant something would be nice to get rid of that so that Greninja's Dark Pulse can bop it I've also got the uh, it also gets rid of like Choppleberries on Tyranitar switch-ins So my if he's got Tyranitar in the matchup my 
And anytime I bring corn in, I just click knockoff. As because if he goes into Tyranitar, and then I can get rid of its item, and then Superpower 100% knocks it out, no matter what kind of set he is. So that's really nice, and I can just always defog rocks and target flash away with my pressure defog. No matter you know what you know if he's got a faster mon in versus me, I'm still going to be able to defog before he can you know attack or knock me out or something like that. Thanks to my prankster, uh, giving priority to status moves, which is really nice. Um, I'm, I've got enough speed investment to outpace Mega Metacham, uh, Mew, as m maybe Keldeo as well, Keldeo and Cabalion. I think that's actually exactly where I'm sitting is enough speed to outpace the Cabalion and the Keldeo, the Musketeer brothers, and then uh, got the rest in special attack. And then I've got enough attack investment so that Superpower will knock out the, the Tyranitar after Stealth Rocks, even if it's like max HP. So that's going to be nice. Um, I guess that's just about it. I love Tornado, so I hope I can put in some work for you guys. So I mentioned at the when I had both squads pulled up on screen. I mentioned that Ori Corio was on one condition, and if you look at this set, it's kind of uh, it's kind of pretty much straightforward. We have Roost for longevity. We can always switch in on the fighting types, always switch in on Toxic Effects and Roost up, no matter what kind of damage he does to us. As long as he does, doesn't have Toxic on Toxic Effects, which I don't think he has room for. I think if he's wanting to bring uh, status, I don't think it's going to be on Toxic Effects. Perhaps Mew or I really don't see it coming on Toxic X. I don't see him bringing Haze either. I don't have a lot of setup options. So I don't see him bringing Haze. Um, and like I mentioned, this is my win condition. This thing can take hits from Mega Medicham. I can't I can't even come close to being 2 k with by Zen Headbutt or High Jump Kick or anything like that. And I've got, like I mentioned, his only ways to resist is with Tyranitar and Mew, my Revelation Dance being Psychic type. So I've got the Hidden Power Bug there. It will hit Tyranitar and Mew for super effective damage. Obviously, it's not going to be doing a ton to um, Tyranitar. But it will do enough, and if I've got enough set, like if I've set up enough, then it will blast him. Also, uh, Tyranitar is not that huge of a threat to things like Clefable, and having Greninja, Azu, and Mega Sceptile to revenge kill it. Having Superpower on Tornado Therian, I feel like if he does bring it, then I can still win with my Ori Corio thanks to the rest of my squad. But that's basically it for for the for the Ori Corio. Like, it, oh, well, I guess I can talk about my speed investment. Um, I've got enough speed, as you can see. 88 EVs in speed puts me right at 244 speed so that I outpace Tyranitar always. And then I've got enough speed. Like, I didn't really put, speed, like, those 64 SPDF EVs are just leftovers. I put my defense, my HP, and I speed, speed creeped the Tyranitar, and then I had enough uh, EVs. I had 64 EVs left over, so I just put that in SPDF just for, you know, it, it helps versus things like, I guess, um, Stunfisk and Keldeo, Toxapex, Serp even, can switch in on that, being a flying type, you know, and it, going for Leaf Storm puts me in an okay position. And uh, Hidden Power Bug is actually super effective against Serp too, so that's really nice. Uh, but yeah, that's it, and we can move on to our last mod now, which is going to be the Mega Sceptile. Alright, so the last one I'm bringing to this match, like I mentioned earlier, I got a Sword Sense variant here for Mega Sceptile. Uh, first time I'm bringing this this season, I think, anyway. We've got an Adamant Sword, well, not an Adamant, but we do have an Attack Boosting Nature, which is going to be the Naughty Nature minus Spadef, which is okay. I don't necessarily need it in this matchup. Felt like, uh, felt like, um, having 
you know, but if I lowered my defenses and he had fake out Mega Medicham or bullet punch Mega Medicham, then that could be a lot more problematic for me, and I don't want it to be. So I felt like my minus spadef nature would be better because I'm not necessarily going to be taking an ice beam from you or Tyranitar or uh, like a dragon, like a plus two dragon pulse from Serp anyway. So uh, spadef doesn't really matter in this matchup, and I am Swords Dance with Hidden Power Fire because he does have the Scavalier, which could be problematic, and Leaf Blade. Plus two Leaf Blade does quite a bit to things like Mew, Tyranitar, Mega Medicham. Um, the plus two Dragon Dragon Claw does a lot to Serp, and then Leaf Storm plus two Leaf Storm, or excuse me, plus two Leaf Blade does a lot to Toxapex, Keldeo, and the Stunfisk. And then his only resist to either Leaf Blade or Dragon Claw are the Scavalier and the Cabalion, which I have the Hidden Power Fire for. And then he's got the Talon Flame which doesn't appreciate Dragon Claw. He's got the Serp, which doesn't appreciate Dragon Claw. So I felt like this was a pretty cool set. I got enough speed to outpace um, everything on his squad up to Talonflame, I believe. And then uh, and then I've got to like put in my, my 12 leftover EVs into special attacks so that my Hidden Power Fires would do quite a bit more to things like Cabalion and the Escavalier in this instance. But yeah, that's going to be the squad. And we'll go ahead and hop into the replay and we'll be right back with it. Alright, so here we are with the replay, and my opponent does bring the Toxapex, Mega Medicham, Talonflame, Mew, Keldeo, and the Stunfist. So no Tyranitar, and I was about as hard as a Tyranitar when I saw that. Um, he doesn't bring Superior either, which is really nice. That thing was a huge threat. Um, kind of makes Azu more of a direct check to Keldeo. It opens up uh, Oriku Oreo to be a direct check to Mega, or yeah, the Mega Medicham. And then, uh, I think... Like, well, we'll talk about Ruby in a minute and what potential leads could be. So, my way of winning this match is definitely with the Ori Corio. Um, I can weaken, I, I can actually beat the Keldeo and the Stunfisk with Mega Sceptile. Potentially, depending on his sets, if he's like, like Rindo Berry or something, he could catch me off guard. But I'm 100% prepared for a Rindo Berry or something. Um, so I think that's important. I think, uh, I think... His best lead is potentially Mew, depending on the rest of his squad, like what his potential rockers are. If Stunfisk is his rocker, then it makes sense that he would, wouldn't lead Mew. But if Mew is his rocker, it makes sense for him to lead Mew because he could taunt my potential rocker, which is Clefable. And if his Mew does have taunt, then he could pretty much taunt Clef, taunt Azu from setting up, taunt Oricorio, and be very problematic for for any of my leads really so like I felt like my best lead was Greninja and if he led with um, the Keldeo then I could just switch out I'm obviously not going to click extra century while it's a full I could click hydro pump versus stun fist um, potentially I think if he was to lead with Talonflame that he would have to fear a life orb water shuriken because with three hits it potentially knocks out Talonflame from full uh, so I think he would have to scout for that and go straight into his Toxapex. And if he leads with Mega Medicham, I'm pretty much just going to hard switch out into my Ori Corio. So yeah, that being said, I am going to lead off with my Greninja. I felt like it leads well against the majority of his squad. And I think I can force in Toxapex with, or Keldeo really with, uh, with a Greninja lead. And I think, like, I I'll just click uh, Extra Sensory here. So uh, he leads off with the Talonflame. I'm going to lead off with the Greninja here. And like I mentioned, he, he has to fear, like I've ran Life Orb, I've ran Scarf. He's got to fear the offensive Greninja here. He can't just stay in. He's got to hard switch out into Keldeo or Toxapex, predicting my Hydro Pump, Water Shuriken, or a potential uh, Choice Scarf Hydro Pump, uh, Modest Choice Scarf Hydro Pump. I don't know if it would knock out a Talent player from full, but I assume it would, unless he's like Spadef, like very heavily Spadef invested. So yeah, I'm just going to click Hydro Pump here. Um, and potentially knock out a talent flame, but it was so obvious that he goes out into Keldeo or Toxic Picture that I'm actually going to make a turn one prediction and just click extra century here. <laughs> and he stays in with talent flame and goes for the Z move, uh, which I didn't necessarily expect. I felt like, you know, had I been Sash or Life Orb, well, first of all, if I was Life Orb and clicked Water Shuriken, talent flame had a chance to drop. And if I was Sash and clicked Hydro Pump there, uh, he would have put me in range of Torrent, and then Hydro Pump would have. 100% knocked him out here, and I don't necessarily think that trading Talonflame for Greninja was the play at all, like, 
I can see how threatening Greninja is to your squad once Toxapex is gone, but you have Toxapex, and you also have Keldeo, so I didn't see a reason for the Supersonic Sky Strike on turn one, uh, when it could have been a much better way to break something like Clefable or Oricorio for him. Uh, that's just my opinion. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to <laughs> I just drop here and go straight into my Azu. And the reason I went into my Azu here is because I really did, nothing else could go hard in versus a Talonflame and knock it straight out. Um, Mega Sceptile would do maybe half with a Dragon Claw and potentially get Flame Body Burned. Or he goes for, I don't know, Brave Bird and knocks me out or something. Uh, and mind you, Gale Wings is a thing when you're at full, and he is at full, so Brave Bird could have been an option there to knock out Mega Sceptile. I felt like going into Azu, he knows he can't knock me out with one shot, and he knows that I have the potential to knock him out with one shot. So I'm just going to click knock off here, expecting his Toxapex to come in, and this is phenomenal for me, uh, especially as bad as the start was. Um, I think just going out into my Ori Corio is fine right here. I get in before he can throw off Toxic Spikes. I don't necessarily see him going for a Poison type move or Toxic. Like I mentioned in my prep talk, I didn't think Toxic Spikes would be running Toxic in this matchup. If anything, it would be on the Mew, um, potentially a Talon Flame or a Serp, something really, really fast. Or fast in terms of his squad, anyway. But I get my Ori Corio in here, and he brings in his Mega Metagem and reveals Fake Out. Does 24% but uh i got, got my leftovers here and he's forced out here at this point and i'm just going to start calm minding up um i was behind in the matchup already and he doesn't have tyranitar and i have no reason to not start calm minding up here at this point and just start uh boosting away boosting away and get myself in a position to where i'm healthy i'm very strong and i can start firing off uh, the revelation dance unfortunately my opponent gets a discharge para here and uh, I am paralyzed, so that's a little bit unfortunate. And I wasn't able to move on that turn, which, uh, no, 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 I did get a Calm Mind off of that turn, I believe. But uh, yeah, he gets his rocks up and then heart switches into his Toxapex, which I'm going to re reveal that I'm still faster, despite the para, and I'm able to one-shot the Toxapex there. I don't think I've ever saw that, <laughs> uh, Toxapex being one-shotted. And uh, yeah, there it was for the first time. Yeah, that I've saw anyway. My opponent clicks fake out here, gets a little chip damage off on me, and I was seeing his plan here. He's going for the Zen headbutt, he's trying for the flinches to get me at least in range of like uh, Talonflame's Brave Bird, or to put me in range to where Mew could come in and taunt me, and then he could 1v1 me from there if I don't have coverage. But uh, yeah, I get fully paralyzed there, which was unfortunate. <laughs> and I'm able to roost up here, finally. That was a little bit scary there. Had I been flinched or paired once more that right there on that turn that would have been awful but he, he reveals substitute as i roost up and now i'm going to break his sub and eventually going to have to roost again but he goes for zen headbutt here and he gets a flinch so he's got a full pair and a flinch already <laughs> so that's a little bit unfortunate for me especially because i could win right here it like him bringing in Mega Metagem makes me think that I can win because why would you bring this thing in if it can't beat me? Like, I wasn't real sure, so I was like, Ori Corio must have this in the bag at this point. And I am uh, paralyzed, so I can't be poisoned by anything. So it's really nice at this point in the matchup. I have to roost though. Like, I have to get up basically back to full so that when he clicks his in headbutt here, I, it would only do like 30% and I would have been at 70 something after leftovers. And, uh, out of range of a Talonflame's Brave Bird. And down goes the Mecha Metachamp to my Revelation Dance. And now uh, we're going to see how much this Talonflame does to me. And he goes almost for about 45%. That's 46%, so that's really nice. But I'm able to knock him out with the Revelation Dance. And here I'm going to roost up. I had to I had to try. Uh, I did figure he would be Taunt. Like I mentioned, he's brought Taunt on Mew every time. Now I've seen players like Rysepool use Mew. And he's definitely more of a defensive Mew user, but I've also seen people like Skyrise use Mew way, 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 way more offensively. So I can see both sides of the spectrum, but I definitely like offensive Mew better, and I think that maybe uh, if you're watching this Rise Bowl, you can start using a more offensive Mew and see if you like it. Maybe not with this team composition that you have, but in the future when you use Mew, because I've noticed that it's Taunt Roost every week. Anyways, 
he does taunt me. So here I'm just going to go off for the Hidden Power Bug, and he reveals Psychic being his hardest way to hit me. And Hidden Power Bug does a ton, does almost 75% to him, and is easily going to be able to knock him out here. I didn't even mind roosting, uh, like waiting for Taunt to wear off and then roosting, uh, because on the turn that I knocked him out there, Taunt ended anyway, so it's perfect, uh, basically perfect. So he goes out into his Keldeo here, and he gets an Icy Wind. He goes for the Icy Wind. Uh, I'm not real sure why. Like, his play was to go for... Uh, I guess Icy Wind might have a critical hit. A uh, higher critical hit ratio. So that might have been the reason he went for it. But, uh, yeah, I thought the play was served or something. Anyways, he goes out into a Stun Fisk here. And after the Icy Wind and the Para, I am slower than Stun Fisk. And it looks to be a 3-hit KO. Doing 49% there. But we're going to get a crit here, and we're going to end the game with a 5-0. Um, had we not got that crit, he could have potentially knocked out my Ori Corio and gotten the differential lower. And that's a little bit unfortunate, but I think it was a roll there. I think it was, uh, maybe even 49% was a low roll. But yeah, it's going to be a good game. Ori Corio pulling through like a fucking boss. Like this mon. <laughs> Everybody, uh, he called it a bad bird. Everybody else called it an unbird. I call it the bird god, bird king the bird jesus the real bird jesus but yeah ori corio pulling through good game to rise pool good luck the rest of the season my man um and we're gonna be moving on to five and zero with a plus 14 differential so not too shabby especially after coming off the season we had last uh, last season which was pretty awful um i'm sad that mega or, yeah mega septile didn't get to show off swords dance and that the tyranitar didn't get bought by superpower and i'm really really disappointed of my turn one play, thinking that he would preserve Talonflame's health at all cost, but uh, but overall, I'm really glad that this set came through, and I was really uh, really proud of that. And shout out to K Kirby for showing me the power of Ori Corio to begin with, and I used it in week four and week five now, and it put in a lot of work last week, put in a lot of work this week, and just looking forward to using it the rest of the season. But yeah, that's gonna be it. Let me know what you thought about the prep and the plays on both sides of the field. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, all the good stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.